everybody. Good day to you. How are you today? So I'm waking up to Foodie Beauty having another little temper tantrum in her community post. You know, it's really ironic. It's so ironic that Foodie likes to tell all of us to stay mad, but yet she's the only one who's angry. Every day she's angry. And she's in Kuwait and it's Ramadan, and yet she just can't stop herself from getting angry every single day. <laughs> maybe you're talking to yourself, Chantal, when you say stay mad, because maybe that's just a manifestation for you. Maybe that's what's your mantra to stay mad. You like to stay mad. So what is Foodie mad about today? Well, she's mad about a few things. She's mad about the comments that were made on the couple's gym vlog. People taking note of the fact that she was eating a lot of food before she went to the gym and a lot of food after her gym visit. A uh, lot of comments about that. I made some comments myself. I just couldn't understand how anyone could eat the food that she was eating and the amount that she was eating it right before going to the gym because that would be really really uncomfortable to have a full stomach of food and then go work out although i told you guys i thought you know i think she's just going to the gym to get some footage walk around for a minute and that was the extent of her working out at the gym and when i saw the vlog it was very obvious that both she and sala went to the gym specifically just to get some footage, walk around in a new location, look for all the mirrors, do the little selfie moments. Hey, look at me. I'm at the gym. It really wasn't about working out. It was about just finding another location to film in where they could show something different besides, say, the desert or the sand or power lines or more on the road footage. You know, they're always looking around for new locations and they're always on the lookout for locations where there's nobody else around that way there's no chance of any kind of legal trouble so i guess the gym is now the new location of choice although that's really expensive to pay a gym membership just to show up every once in a while and walk around and look for all the mirrors but that's just me that's just my opinion anyway so foodie beauty made a community post and she's going off about her former cat, BBJ. Uh, for those who are not aware, BBJ now has a new Gucci collar, a courtesy of French Fry Girl and the Girl Gang. Uh, and she looks great with the collar on. I think she looks fantastic. But Foodie is raging about that. So she's raging about the comments that people made about the couple's vlog, all the comments about the food, and also just going off about BBJ and French Fry Girl and all of that. So I want to cover that. I want to cover the community posts, stuff on Twitter, uh, and a few other things. We're just going to wrap it all together into one package and just put it all in the one video. There's no need for a bunch of videos. So let me just go ahead and bring up Foodie's community post so you guys can see. Okay. So there's the community post. There's the community post. Oh no, she's having a fit. Uh-oh. She's having a fit. <laughs> oh, foodie. Oh, you're so mad. You're so mad, Foodie, that BBJ's got a Gucci collar and you don't? Are you mad? You're so mad. Maybe you should stay mad about that. That your cat has a Gucci collar and you don't. Oh, I'm so sorry, Foodie. I know it's so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad when your former pet, who's gone through the worst kind of purgatory in the world and had to deal with you and all of your neglect, that she is now living the life that she deserves. Isn't that horrible? It's so horrible. Yeah, cry about it some more for me. Yeah, go ahead and cry. Cry, Cody. Yes. Yes, do it, girl. Cry those tears. Cry. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, go ahead, cry. Cry all those tears, foodie. That BBJ is living her best life. She's going to get a catio. She's got her health. She's doing so much better. She's in a home with people that actually love her and are doing well with her. Yeah, go ahead and cry. Go ahead and cry. You told all of us to save our tears for BBJ. And I cried tears of happiness when I found out she was no longer with you because whoever had her would do a much better job. And then when I found out it was French fry girl and her sister-in-law and her brother, I was immensely happy knowing she's going to be well taken care of. And so she is. And the pictures that I've seen of BBJ recently, she's doing a thousand times better than when she was ever with you. So go ahead and cry, Foodie. Cry. Keep crying. Keep crying. Chantal says, LMAO. And no, she is not with the sister-in-law because the person who messaged me is in Cali. Foodie, does it matter where the person lives? You never cared for BBJ. I mean, let's be real. Let's be honest and real here. Let's, let's put the truth on the table. You never cared for BBJ. You were not about caring for your pets. You were all about exploiting your pets. You're all about that life of putting them on camera because you knew your viewers cared about them, were concerned about them. And you would dangle that over people's heads about whether they were getting fed or not, getting cared for or not. You were constantly doing that, using your own pets as emotional blackmail of sorts and manipulation to keep people watching. But you couldn't be bothered to take them to the vet, get them medical care, get them proper food, provide a clean environment. Couldn't be bothered with that. You're all about using your pets as living props for your show. And then when you got bored with them and you thought to yourself, well, they're not bringing me enough money. I'm going to go ahead and move on to men. That's what you did. You just spent the least amount of money and time with your pets and more money on guys that don't even care about you. And here we are. And the one thing that you did right was giving BBJ and Sam to other people. That was the one thing you did right. And just because French Fried Girl and her family have BBJ, she's in a better place. She's no longer a concern to you. Not that she ever was. Not that you ever really truly cared. It's funny to me how you want people to stop talking about the BBJ situation, and yet you won't shut up about it. You won't shut up. And for all of the neglect that you gave to your pets, this is what I have to say to you. Ooh. Yeah, that's right. Ooh. Boo on you, Sean Paul. Yep, yep, boo on you. And you know what? You know what? I've got a little special message to you from my cat, Booger. Booger's got a message for you because, you know, Booger, she's behind me most of the time. When I'm doing my reacts to you, listening to your grating voice, seeing all the things you do. And, she, you know, she knows about what you've done to BBJ. And this is this is her thoughts. <coughs> yep, she's not happy. You put her in a bad mood. See, that's everywhere are hearing about what you did to BBJ. They're not having it. They're not liking it. You are a bad person. You're evil. Evil, you hear me? Evil. Yeah, there you go. Booger is cursing you out right now. The bad words. It's okay, baby. Mama's here. Mom is here. <laughs> Mom is here, Booger. Mama loves you. This evil pig demon doesn't deserve animals. Shame on her. <laughs> but look at you mad because BBJ has a nice new collar. What are you mad about? 
You didn't pay for it. What do you care? You didn't care about BBJ when you had her. What are you going off about? Okay, let's go on with the post. She says, I'm sorry, but you can put a fancy collar on her all you want. But at the end of the day, she looks miserable. No, she doesn't. And I'll prove that because there are pictures that I found on Twitter of BBJ, how she looks now. She does not look miserable. She's got a life in her eyes that I haven't seen in forever. Like she looks so sad to me for the longest. Whenever I watch the react, uh, when I did react videos to Chantal, that poor baby looks so incredibly sad. It would break my heart. I just wanted to pick her up in my arms and cuddle her and feed her and, and get her out of there because she just, she looks so sad and so lonely and so miserable. And when you look at her eyes now, you can tell she is being well taken care of. She's being well loved. She looks very content. And that gives me such peace knowing that she's in a better place. Uh, she looks like she wants to blank herself. No, she doesn't. I saw this from your mama's channel, but even his, I have to unsub from her for now. I don't know why. Only because I will be 100% trying to ignore all drama. BBJ hated wearing collars. I should know I had her for 21 years. She's not 21 years old. The vet confirmed she's 18. See, Foodie, for someone who owns your pet, you don't even know how old BBJ is. One minute she's 17, the next minute she's 21. That, that just points to show how much care you gave your pets, how much you were paying attention. You don't even know how old your pets are. Now she's stuck in a Motel 6 with a chain smoking bully who rages all day and admits to lot liking cats. Foodie, Foodie, why do you insist on trying to shame people for where they live? What is with that? Really? Let's be real. When you were at the villa, how did you get there? How did you get there? You got in the villa because of Pete's. That's facts. It was his name on the lease, not yours. That's why you couldn't kick him out. You used his credit to get into the villa because your credit was crap. But it was because of Pete's you got in the villa in the first place. Your name was never on that lease. Yes, you did pay the rent. Yes, you did pay the bills, but it was his name on the lease. Now, here you are in Kuwait after leaving the villa. You're in a little teeny tiny apartment. And God help you if there's a rolling blackout, you're going to be cooking in your own skin. But you're not living large, ma'am. Even if there is somebody out in the world living in a Motel 6 room. Hey, a room's a room. A home is a home. No matter what you call home, you got a roof over your head, you're doing okay. Don't crap on somebody else's living situation. We all got to do what we all got to do. Sometimes we struggle, sometimes we don't. But home is home. If you got a roof over your head, you got food in your mouth, you're able to pay your bills, you're doing okay. Not everybody has to have a mansion to be happy. But imagine you trying to look down your nose at anyone else's living situation when yours is not luxurious, okay? You shouldn't be looking down on anybody. You're not in a financially stable position at all. <laughs> you know, you've got, you're still dealing with bankruptcies. Be quiet. Uh, a chain-smoking bully who rages all day and admitted to not liking cats. But you know what? That makes it more admirable. Even if French Fried Girl doesn't personally like cats, BBJ has a new home anyway. And she's in a much better place. And I think that's fantastic. She yet apparently to show BBJ on video or clear vet records. She showed the vet records. But anyway, I have made peace with the fact that my mistake was trusting the liar who reached out to rehome her. And now at the end of the day, you are all complicit in exploiting BBJ for your own needs. Ma'am, ma'am, what are you doing? What are you doing? Did anybody force you to make this community post to talk about the whole BBJ situation? No. 
No, you're mad at French fried girl. You're not gonna forever be mad at French fried girl. You're forever gonna be jealous and mad and salty and bitter and hateful over the fact that you have your YouTube channel. You're not willing to put any work into your content, any thought or pride into yourself or your content. And believe me, that shows when you don't put any love or pride into who you are or what you do, you're mad and angry and bitter that somebody who reacts to you is doing 10 times better than you are. Someone who comes on camera sober, not messed up on drugs or alcohol. Someone coming on camera not having to you know, run around half naked and they're doing 10 times better. They have a main channel, they've got maybe a couple of side channels, a Twitch, and keeping it all going. See, hard work. If you put the work in, you get the reward. You don't work, you don't get any reward. How can you expect a harvest when you plant nothing, when you do nothing? You see how that works? You do something, you get something back. You do nothing, you get nothing back. You're forever jealous and salty about the fact that I'm sure you watch Frenchie. You see the super chats. I'm sure you're adding them all up in your head and you're mad because your channel is circling the drain and it's your fault. It's not Frenchie's fault. It's not the reactor's fault. It's your fault because you just got stuck in a rut of doing nothing, you know, making it your business to try to find things you can do with the least amount of work and the least amount of effort and get paid for it still. You caused that to happen. You put that in motion. You did. So if BBJ has a new caller. Why do you care so much? She's not your pet anymore. She's never going to be your pet. You're not going to get BBJ back. Why do you care? Why do you care if she's rocking a Gucci collar? If BBJ wants to wear a Gucci collar, have a Gucci catio, a Gucci cat bed, a Gucci house, a Gucci limousine, I'm all for it. Whatever good that comes to that animal, she deserves it. For putting up with all of you and your nonsense and your neglect for so many years, she deserves all the good, all the positive, all the peace, all the contentment, all the health that will come to her. She's been through a lot, she and Sam. I wish both of those cats health and happiness for the rest of their days, however long that is, because you did not give them those things. You gave them a villa full of trash and filth and mold and fruit flies. You were neglectful. All you cared about was your own self gratification, running after men that don't care about you. And you're with one now that don't care about you. He's just around for whatever he can get out of you. He's doing the long con. He's going to milk you completely dry and then leave you destitute. And you know what? I'm cool with that. I am so cool with that. It's will. It's what you deserve for everything you've done, everything you've said, as offensive as you've been, you deserve it all. Take your medicine, ma'am. Swallow it. Swallow your medicine the way you swallow an ashy. Hear me? Oh, people exploiting BBJ. Really? Really? When she brought Sam and BBJ on camera and exploited them until she lost interest in that. And here's a picture of BBJ. Blown up picture. I'm going to show better pictures on Twitter. Okay, moving on to the next community post. This has to do with the vlog they did. Chantal says, I want to clarify for those confused that the fast food scene in our couple's vlog on our Sala and Chantal channel was before I started the gym. Actually, the Burger King was the day before Ramadan started as no one is allowed to eat in public during Ramadan until the sun sets here. Restaurants are not even open until, the, until close after. Is it Iftar? As for the Hardys and our couple's vlog, go check it out. <laughs> Plug, plug, right, Chantal? You're promoting that? That was pre-gym. I have many recordings I have to make onto the vlogs. I have not had any fast food except for Subway, which was many healthy options, 
since the Hardys and put it in our vlog to show how I still struggle with fast food addiction. You don't struggle with it. You run to fast food every chance you get. And you use the fact that you don't want to cook or you can't cook as an excuse to go and get fast food. You're not trying to cook healthy, Chantal. You've already told us. You don't want to cook because the stove makes it hot in the house. It's just too difficult for you. So you use all of that as a myriad of excuses to not cook. I am learning to master my impulse control and we'll have updates on this soon. You know, Chantal, I've been watching you for a while. You make excuses. You make excuses and those excuses, they excuse away what you do. By saying things like, you guys know I have an impulse control problem. You know that I have a problem with food. You're excusing it away rather than dealing with it. You have a problem, but you're not really interested in solving it because you're too busy profiting off of your hurt. There's many things in life that you can trade away, that you can sell. But the one thing you should never sell is your health. You should never put a price on your health and sell it piece by piece until you have none left. And that's what you've done. You've been selling off your health piece by piece, little by little until you have very little left. And what's going to happen when you're bankrupt on that? Are you going to be in the hospital? Is there going to be a medical emergency? If you're going to the gym and just using the gym as just another filming location, rather than working out as you should, the only person you're fooling and the only person you're hurting is yourself. Your health is your business. You can make yourself healthy or stay unhealthy and then suffer the consequences for being unhealthy. Nobody can step in and help you. Nobody. Nobody can do anything about it. It's not up to us. We're just here to watch your content and react to it. Or if you're not a reactor, just a viewer watching you. But if you think you're pulling the wool over our eyes and thinking, I've got them fooled, they're thinking they're going, I'm going to the gym, time will tell with that. Because if you're not going to the gym and working out, if you're going to the gym and just putting on a show, time will tell. Because if you're not losing weight, if you're not getting healthy, it's going to become very, very obvious very soon. You know, if you're sitting there gaining weight, gaining weight, gaining weight, obviously you're not going to the gym. Obviously, you're not eating healthy. It, it, you know, changes are sometimes apparent, sometimes they're not. But if you're just going to the gym and using it as a filming location rather than working out, we're going we're gonna to figure it out soon. We always do. We always do. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the, let's go on to, oh, yes, yeah, she did a video. She just posted a video. Now, I'm going to say ahead of time, I don't know who this person, is it Evie, is, but Foodie made it her business to talk about FFG in a very short, snarky video. You know, and this is during Ramadan. Shouldn't she be practicing having better thoughts? being more uh, modest and, and being more kind and positive. N not, not Chantal, not her. So like she's going in on FFG again. Not that she's ever going to stop. Nope. Nope. We're turning down the volume. Like, I don't know who this person Evie is, but there was, there was absolutely no reason for Chantal to post this. It just it seems like maybe Chantal's looking for anybody who's against FFG and she's going to highlight them in a video. Uh, she's talking about French fry girl hiding her face. She doesn't hide her face. She just chooses not to come on camera. And I've said this before. I'll say it again. Fodi, can you really come down on anybody for not showing themselves live on camera when you won't come on camera without your bazillion filters at work? You're not showing how you really look. You practically have a living avatar. 
So make it fun of French fry girl. You're a piece of crap for showing these DMs. Well, you were a piece of crap before showing the DMs. Everybody knows it. And she, she's calling Gucci tacky. She's saying that Gucci is tacky. Chantal, you know you would love to have some Gucci in your life. But then again, you have no fashion sense. We've seen the way you dress. You desperately need a stylist. You do not know how to dress, ma'am. You don't know how to dress in the best colors for your skin tone, for your body shape, none of that. But yet you, you think you're a fashionista now? And you're going to call Gucci tacky? <laughs> There's Chantal over there calling somebody else tacky for their fashion choices. <laughs> yeah, this is, the, this is how I feel whenever I see how she dresses. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So just going off about FFG. That there was no reason for this video. None. None. You know, like Chantal has said, I'm not going to. Didn't she say in a community post yesterday that she is not going to pay attention to the haters? She's going to ignore us. It doesn't sound like she's ignoring anybody, does it? Like, I'm telling you, she, Chantal's got an attention problem. She is addicted to attention. She needs it on her channel during her live streams and her videos. She's got to have people in front of her, like, pumping her up and kissing her behind. And when she's done with YouTube, like, doing her stuff on her channel, she's running around, tiptoeing around, tiptoe, 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 and everybody's live chats, lurking around with sock accounts, going on Twitter. I mean... She is so addicted to attention. She's looking for anyone to say anything about her. And then she uses what she hears as content for her own channel. Like what she hears from other people gives her ideas for her content. So in all actuality, her content is reactionary. She's reacting to us. She's a reactor. <laughs> Vody, you're a reactor. You're reactionary. You're reacting to everything, to your own emotions, to the opinions and thoughts of other people. You are reactionary, ma'am. Yes, you are. So that's the other video she did. So how about we just go on over to Twitter? Because people got interesting stuff to say on Twitter. All right, so let me just go ahead and share the screen. And there's my Twitter for anybody who wants to find me on Twitter. It is Wow Girl Sarah. There we go. There's me at the top. Hi. Uh, so Gucci Gang says the beast is up and at it already. Yeah, she got up early in the morning. Maybe she should be doing her prayers right now, doing some charitable works. But she made a point to write that post. The two posts. <laughs> she wasted no time. No time. She's mad, mad because of the comments about the vlog, mad about BBJ having a nice new Gucci collar. She is mad, mad. Miss Flupa Booty says, Chantal, six hours ago, I am learning to master my impulse control. Chantal, 27 minutes ago, post video obsessing over FFG. How's that impulse control going, working for you? It doesn't seem like it's working very well. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it's working very well. And you know what? I love that for her. <laughs> yep. 
Like she just can't control her anger. Fodi has an anger problem and she's doing nothing to fix that. She just rages and rages and rages. And she just, you know, I'm just going to put my opinion out there. I used to know someone like Fodi, not exactly like her, but enough that the similarities are there. I had an ex that had an anger problem. He was filled to the brim with self-loathing and self-hate. And in my opinion, with him and also with Foodie, people like that, they like to get mad. They like to stay mad because that's when they feel the most alive is when they're mad and when they're raging. That's when they have the most energy. That might be the case with Foodie. That she just, she gets mad and she stays mad because when she's not mad, she feels numb. Like there's, there's nothing there for her. But when she's raging, like she's popping off, she feels something. She feels energetic. She feels alive. That, that might be the reason why she's not getting rid of her little anger problem. Nothing but love says, do us all a favor and just don't come back. We were all much happier. It was nice. You spread the toxicity. Trust me. We won't miss you. I, I, I second those thoughts. Nothing but love. I do. I second those thoughts. Oh, this was the community post. Did she, did she edit it? I think she did. So this is like another post she did. I, I guess she cut it down. No, it's the same one. Sorry. I thought it was different. Truth is, says, oh my. Look who's looping about her critics again. Foodie Beauty Chantal, you live in an apartment smaller than one third of the Lux Villa kitchen. Can it with the Motel 6 jabs? It's starting to sound like jealousy. Have a gravy and settle down, okay? <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with the Motel 6? What's wrong with the Motel 6? It, it's a room. What do you want? Motel 6 room is not a mansion, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, Miss Robinson says she has no self-respect, no self-worth. This is so embarrassing, dragging another creator into her drama because she's a blankety blank. <laughs> this is so weird and cringe. Is she trying to pull eat something or something? The cloud music suits her best, though. Yeah, they're talking about the video. Okay, who did this? <laughs> Judge Judy, did you do this? You're wrong for this, ma'am. I love Pop-Tarts. Star Kissed, Tuna Light, Fupa flavored Pop-Tarts. What? Uh-uh. No. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't. I, listen, I grew up eating Pop Tarts. Now they're ruined for me. They're ruined for me. I can't. I can't. Like, I, listen, I'm taking my Pop Tarts back. She, she, she's not allowed to ruin my Pop Tarts access denied <laughs> florida salt and sass says uh, she also keeps saying how shannon put her dog in a bedroom timbit was shut in the bedroom all the time because chantal wouldn't keep up with her cat's vet care and vax and vaccines shannon's dog was put up when camp company came over poor timbit had to live exclusively in a bedroom so for those who are not aware pete's uh, Chantal's former roommate and ex-fiance had a cat named Timbit. When they moved in together, Timbit, uh, I believe Timbit had feline leukemia. And because of that, Timbit was kept exclusively in Pete's bedroom and never left. And unfortunately did not make it out uh, alive. So Timbit was shut up in the room and uh, it, it kept in horrible conditions. Uh, Chantal could have got her cats vaccinated so Timbit could have maybe wandered throughout the house, but she never did. Chantal says she is a you know, caring cat person. But in my opinion, 
if she were a really caring cat person, knowing that Timbit could not leave the bedroom, she could have taken the smaller room where pet Pete was and let Pete have the room with the balcony so Timbit could have gone out on the balcony and gotten some fresh air and sunshine. But, you know, she made a big deal about the balcony, but she never went out and used it much. The poor Timbit never made it out of that house. Never. Okay, so Chantal is saying she looks miserable, does she? She says, BBJ looks miserable. No, this was Timbit when she lived with you, Foodie Beauty. Look at how she looked then. Look how sad her eyes look. Her eyes look so sad. It broke my heart. I just I just wanted to pick her up and cuddle her and get her out of there. I just felt so awful for her. It's heartbreaking. And here she is now. Here's little BBJ now. She's comfortable. She's in a cat bed. All of that. <laughs> you like to see that. I'm lo I'm lo this this makes me happy. Seeing this makes me happy. I love no sarcasm. I love that the most for BBJ. I love this the most. This is the picture of a content, well cared for animal in a nice warm cat bed on a cat tree by the window. There's space everywhere to roam around, to move. There's no filth. There's no moldy pots. There's no fruit flies. This is how it should be. This is how a pet should live. Absolutely, positively, blissfully content. This is how all pets should live. All of them. So you said she, okay, look at those eyes. Sad compared to this, compared to that. Shame on you for not giving her this over here, foodie. You could have, you didn't. This is from Miss Mary Cab saying, uh, from Lisa, take it or leave it. As an OG foodie beauty watcher, I can firmly say if you photoshopped a hijab on her old videos when she lived with BB, talking about diet and exercise, not one thing has changed, not one. True, absolutely true. Because I remember back in the day, when BB found out about her problem with food, uh, BB did what he could with Chantal. He encouraged her to eat healthy and go to the gym. Problem is, if you're someone and if you are not familiar with eating problems, things of that sort, it's hard to understand. And it's a, it's a, it's a problem that is over your head. And it's even over the head of the person who has the problem. This is a problem that requires therapy and counseling. Uh, it's not just a problem of eating too much food. There's, there's maybe some mental issues, psychological issues wrapped up with it that need to be discussed and worked out. But BB, because he's not a psychologist, he's not a doctor, you know, he doesn't have that knowledge. He just did what he could. He encouraged her to eat healthy and go to the gym, and that did not last long. But nothing has changed. She talks about exercise. She talks about getting healthy, but you know what? Talk is cheap. Foodie likes to say things out loud because that's easy. Anybody can talk about anything, but actually taking the words and putting them into action and just laying out a plan and a blueprint and doing things, that requires effort. She's all about doing things where no effort is involved. And you can talk about, you could talk about scaling Mount Everest. You could talk about going to Jamaica. You could talk about doing a million things, Booty, but talk is talk. Talk is easy. Talk is cheap. It's when you actually take the talk and put some effort behind the talk and make it a reality that makes all the difference. But you're lazy. You go as far as talking about stuff, but then you don't do stuff. And this is your health we're talking about. Your health is your decision. It's your choice to be healthy or not healthy. And if you're not healthy, you will deal with the consequences of that. You already are. 
But it's not up to any of us to change you, to make you better. It's up to you. So time will tell to see what direction you're going in. Tweety says, jealous that BBJ's bald spots grew back and yours didn't. Stay mad. I agree with that. Oh, now this is something cute. So you get the horse and a cat that are best friends. Look, the cat's like, look, the horse is just like a big living cat bed and I'm here for it. Animals are amazing. Even animals of different species getting along and just loving on each other. It's always cute. <laughs> the horse is like, um, I don't think your butt belongs on my face, but thanks. This is from Meonk. Look, the mother cat is bringing the babies over. Cat's like, I need a babysitter. Human, help me. Take care of my, my beans. Aw, look at the mama kitty. All right, enough with that. Let's uh, move on. This is the sweetest thing. Look, Kitty's getting a spa day. This is from Cat. The baby kitten's getting a spa day. That is, oh. <laughs> oh, look. Look at the baby. <laughs> now, talk about love and devotion. This person, uh, this is a dog house, one of the best I've ever seen. So the owner built this beautiful condo-like dog house for the dog, saying, this is Maya. Her owner built her a luxury cabin so that people passing by could say hello and give her pets while he's at work. So this dog has its own little cabin. What a, Even for a dog, that's an amazing cabin. Some people just go far and beyond because they love their pets so much. Take note of that, foodie. This is what love looks like. Uh, this is funny. Darth Mondo says, contrary to popular belief, duct tape is not the solution to every problem. <laughs> yeah, that would not work out well. That would That would not be a good decision. Not at all. Uh, Hidden Truth says, Foodie Beauty, now Chantal no longer likes your mama because of this. The cat has gotten more love, attention, and medical care in her entire life than the years she's been with Chantal. But no one can see that as a positive thing for an animal who is suffering in silence. And yes, she did. She suffered in complete silence. BBJ suffered in silence. And anybody who goes back through all the content watching Chantal, it how long did those cats live in filth? How long did they go without proper food? To the point where Sam was fighting BBJ for the little bit of food that was in the house. How long were they breathing in that filthy air? You know, Chantal smoking the green 24 seven. Just seeing her videos, watching her lives, just from that perspective, it was horrifying. Can you imagine the pets actually living in it? What they had to go through, what they had to endure. It was unforgivable. Absolutely unforgivable. And, and your mama's got a problem with Frenchie tagging Gucci to sponsor Baby J. If, listen, if Gucci decided to sponsor BBJ, I think that would be the best troll. I really do. I think that would burn Chantal up because she's over on TikTok. And the way that the TikTokers make money on TikTok is by sponsorships. Wouldn't it just be funny? Wouldn't it just be ironic if Chantal, with her nasty reputation, can't get sponsorships? But BBJ. The cat that she neglected, the cat that she did not love, the cat that she pushed away, the cat that she showed so much contempt for gets a sponsorship from Gucci. Wouldn't that just be lovely? I think that would be lovely. 
I really do. I think that would be absolutely lovely because I want BBJ to have everything that she deserves. Let her have a sponsorship. Let her live a good life in whatever way she can. Let her be healthy. Let her be happy. The poor cat has earned it. She's earned it. She's a survivor. She's a victim of neglect. Let her have all the happiness that can be thrown at her. And here's a picture of little BBJ with the new collar. And she doesn't look miserable to me. Her eyes don't look sad anymore. So what do you mean, Chantal? What do you mean that BBJ looks sad? She looks miserable. I think you're wrong. Yeah, you're definitely wrong. You're, you're saying what you want to say, Chantal, but it don't make it true. So BBJ is over there with a nice, beautiful collar. And you're mad. You're mad. You're absolutely mad. You're over there mooing. Yeah. Oh, you're complaining. You're mad and you're complaining because what? You don't have a Gucci collar? You want a Gucci collar, Chantal? Is that it? You're mad because your cat has something that you don't, you know, she's wearing designer brains and you're not. Is that why you're angry? Like it just ugh. angry over a cat collar. Really? Really? Uh, Hidden Truth says foodie beauty. FFG has done more for BBJ than Chantal ever has. I agree with that. Uh, 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 and she's jealous because BBJ has a designer collar. She's jealous of a cat because people love her more than Chantal. That's where her anger is coming from. Yeah, because Chantal is all about the attention. Chantal is all about the attention. She wants it all on her. She's she she used to get she's jealous of when anyone or anything gets more attention than she does. And yet she won't stop talking about BBJ. I mean, make it make sense. You want people to stop talking about the BBJ situation, yet you won't stop talking about it. You won't stop bringing it up. You're talking about it in your community post. You're posting videos about it. I mean, you got to pick a lane, foodie. You got to pick a lane. I got news for you, though. What happened with BBJ and Sam? You will never, ever, 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 ever be able to completely escape that. It's going to follow you forever. And you can't get mad at the people for reacting the way that they're reacting and feeling the way that you're feeling. What you should be mad at is yourself. Because if you had taken care of your pets the way that you should, you wouldn't be in this situation. If it had been a case of just rehoming your pets and they'd been healthy, nobody would have been talking. But the fact that you were trying to get rid of BBJ because of the neglect, you were trying to hide it. That's where everybody has the problem. It wasn't the rehoming. It was the fact that you neglected your pets so badly that one in particular was so bad off. She had a myriad of health problems. She was a mess inside and out, and it's all your fault. All your fault. You should have provided a clean, safe, healthy home, medical care, proper food. And she wouldn't have been so bad off. And now someone has stepped forward and they're just trying to fix the damage that you caused. And all of that is coming out. It's you should be angry over all the pain and suffering that BBG has been enduring. But the only thing making you angry is the fact that all of your neglect is being exposed and the narrative is not in your control anymore. That's where you're mad. Liars hate to be exposed. They hate it. Because when the truth is out there, they can't control the narrative and they can't control other people's reactions to it. Let's see. Okay, so this is from Donna. So Chantal took a little selfie in the gym. I guess this is like the unfiltered version of Chantal versus the filtered version. You know what, Chantal, you can use all the filters you want. 
You could try to hide how much weight you're gaining, how unhealthy you are, but those filters are not going to make you any healthier. Hiding something does not make a problem go away. So once again, time will tell if you're being serious about the gym, if you're just using it as a temporary talking point, the way you did when you were talking about Jamaica and going to the weekend concert and you're obesing. We will see, won't we? We will see. Because your improved health or lack of health is eventually going to tell on you. If you're taking care of yourself, we'll see better health from you. If you're not, your health is going to get worse. At the end of the day, you're the one that's going to have to pay the price for your lies. And there's another picture of the lovely BBJ with her collar on. That makes me so healthy. <laughs> healthy? <laughs> well, let's hear it for BBJ and her new collar. Yeah, I love that. She looks she looks so good. She looks so content. Oh, it <laughs> Now this is funny. Anybody who has a cat, you know you've gone through this. You know you've been here. If you have a cat or even a dog, they start out as a kitten. You know, they lay on you, but then when they get bigger, it's like they lay on you and you're like, "Oh, I can't breathe." <laughs> That's me and Booger. She likes to lay on my chest and on my stomach when I'm sleeping and walk across my stomach when I'm sleeping. And it's like, dude, do you know not know how heavy you are? This, this, this is so my cat right here. I can relate to this so much. I feel called out almost. <laughs> okay, this is from Florida Salt and Sass. So a little something's been happening lately. It seems like Sala has been sick with a stomach bug. And here's the thing that's the most alarming. Whenever Chantal gets around a guy, if she has to, if she cooks him food, that person guaranteed to get sick. And I don't think it has anything to do with ingredients. You know, Sala, listen to me. Listen, Chantal is very, very filthy. She's very unhygienic. She's nasty. I mean, this person has talked about drip drying as far as uh, wiping herself in the bathroom after she uses the toilet. Knowing Chantal, she doesn't wash her hands. At least not very well. She's not about cleanliness. And this is a person that is serving you food. I would not eat anything that woman serves to me. If she touches a bowl, if she touches a glass, fork, spoons, knives, sticking her fingers in the food, whatever bacteria is on her hands is going to get in the food, such as E. coli. That will give you like so something wrong with your stomach. When she lived with Pete's and she cooked for Pete's, he got food poisoning. Natter got sick too. She's very, very filthy. You know, she's whatever's on her hand gets in the food. Don't trust her, bro. Don't let her cook you any kind of food with them filthy freaking hands. H.Y. Bender says, what to do when your boss is coming to ask about your overdue report? <laughs> and the cat's like, I'm hiding. Look, I'm, you don't see me. I'm not here. Uh, Hidden Truth says, Foodie Beauty, she's definitely reading Twitter. That was a lot of food then. And that was a day before Ramadan, but she was eating on Ramadan in her place. So which is it? They ate pizza. Uh, I, I think Foodie, she, she freaks out knowing that she's going to have to go without food. So she will load up on food until the very last second and then stop. And that's how she's handling it. That's just my opinion. Okay, here this is from Nana's Spiked Tea. Y'all look at her. Fody Beauty claims Salah has another tummy ache in Sir Iroll, who says that in regards of a grown man, 
Well, I'm sure the filth under her nails doesn't help, especially since she's dunking her fingers in his tea. Ew. Ew. Uh-uh. No, I mean, look at her. There's no reason for her to stick her filthy fingers in there. That's just gross. That's just gross. That that might be why you're getting sick, Salah. That might be why you're getting sick. She's sticking her nasty fingers up in there and she does not wash. And who knows what she was doing before she put those fingers in there. She could have been blowing her nose or using the toilet. Ugh. Oh, by the way, guys, speaking of Salah, I got something funny for you. I think I may have come across a little collab between Sala and Foodie. I mean, we both know they're talented. We all know we're ta they're talented people. Yes. We all know that Sala is a whiz on that keyboard and Foodie, she just has those interesting bodily noises. I think I caught a piece of their collab together. Y'all want to hear it? Sounds like a hit single. Sounds like that's a hit single. It's going to blow up the music charts. I mean, you got these two talented people putting themselves together and say, what can we do together? Yeah, that'd be a great collab, wouldn't it, Chantal? It would really blow up the music charts. Beyonce, eat your heart out. <laughs> At the end of the day, the talented Salah on keyboard and Chantal with her flatulence. They're going to light the world on fire. Uh, this is from Ghost Crab. Has, has Chantal quit YouTube again after the gym vid and people pointing out that she outgrew the bigger ring she bought, that she does not work out in the vid, only Salah, and that she's redder than a redneck's neck? Maybe it's too early. It's almost 2 p.m. in Kuwait. She'll wake up soon. So she bought another ring. The ring is different. I don't know. Is that the same ring? Well, the ring that she had on before, the original wedding ring, that sucker was like three sizes too small. It was literally cutting off her circulation. Her finger looked purple. So she bought another ring that was bigger. She actually needed to because that one could have, you know, cut off the circulation in her finger and it could have gone gangrene. But even this ring looks like it's too small. I mean, I've, I worn a ring on that finger. The skin should be bunched up around the top like that. It should not be bunched up around the top like that. I mean, just too small. Her doing her little selfie moment at the gym. Okay, I'm curious about something. I'm curious. Was this before she, she did like some gym, gym footage? And now that I'm looking at this, I'm like, things that make you go, hmm. Because she showed like a little short where she was wearing the black Skechers. So was this taken before the black Skechers? Because she's not wearing them here. I don't know. Just something I noticed. Because in the, in the video where she's showing herself pumping on some exercise equipment, there's black Skechers. But she's not wearing them here. So did she change her shoes? I don't, I don't know. Uh, Kim Impossible says, did this blankety blank just say on her return community post that she was no longer going to watch negative comments and videos? So how would she know people talk bad about her fast food haul? She lives for drama. Her whole life is drama. If she doesn't have trauma, what does she have? There's nothing else to occupy her time. She's got nothing else to do. If she's in a house where she's locked in, what can she do with her time? I mean, there's a lot she could do, but what is she going to do? She could work out by herself in the house and, you know, do a bunch of different things online related, but that, that would not be Chantal. She's just basically locked in a box and I guess that's her dream life. So let her have it. Uh, this is from Indy. BBJ and Sam are now happy cats. That's all that matters. True. So here's a picture of Sam. Aw. 
Look at the baby. Look at him. We love that. We love that. And there's the other of baby J in her cat bed. They look so much happier, don't they? They should be happier. Uh, this is from Mrs. Robinson. Miss Robinson says these girls love to diagnose themselves with anything to look like a victim. Fast food problems uh, uses something uses food as coping mechanism rather than doing therapy to heal properly. You use anything to fill the void. Food, rugs, but whatever, go off. Yeah, food is full of excuses and full of reasons why she stays the way that she stays, but she never takes the road of healing herself. She's all about exploiting her hurt rather than dealing with the hurt. Another picture of BBJ and her Gucci collar. I, I never, I'll never get tired of that. Look at BBJ, Chantal. Look at her. She's happy. She's healthy. She's bright eyed. She's wearing her Gucci collar. Suck on it. Just absolutely suck on it. You don't have a Gucci collar. You ran all the way to Kuwait for a guy that doesn't love you, is never going to love you, and he's around for the paycheck. So are you winning? Nah, I don't think you are. <laughs> nah, nah, you lost. BBJ won. That's how it is. <laughs> That's how it is. That's how it's going to be. Uh, Ghost Crab says, so Sala gets the runs, a.k.a. a tummy ache, whenever Chantal cooks. Okay, you may not be ready for this, but I will tell you anyway. Dramatic pause. You know how Chantal is extremely unhygienic and doesn't wash her hands after taking a poo or touching poo or whatever? Yes. Uh, poo in your food can, can contain dangerous bacteria such as E. coli. Nasty strains can cause UTIs, diarrhea, and severe stomach cramps. Yep. Yep. And I did notice whenever she cooked for Pete, it would get food poisoning. So she has absolutely no concept of food safety, of being clean while cooking, washing your hands, touching things, making sure not to touch things if your hands are filthy. She's just a filthy person. Filthy. Absolutely filthy. So that's it for today, guys. As far as everything that I have for Chantal, unless you decide to do something else, but she is raging. She's raging about people making comments about the gym vlog. Although I will say, Chantal, my opinion, look, if you're gonna do a gym vlog, show some working out. There was no working out in the video. It's Sala walking on a treadmill for like five minutes, that really wasn't a workout. And people were expecting to see you work out, but there was no workout for you. It was kind of clickbait. People weren't tuning in to watch Salah work out. They were looking to see what you were doing to see if you were getting healthy. So you clickbaited. You clickbaited. You went to the gym with your nice new little sketchers and you didn't work out. And I don't think you're ever going to work out. I don't think you're interested in your health. And I don't think Salah has the power to make you want to work out. So your health is your business. You want to stay unhealthy? Who can stop you? Who can stop you? So that's all I got for today. Hope you all have a great day today. And please have a good day today and take care of yourself. And don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment. Thanks for being here and have a good one. Bye-bye.